you know Judith Butler, I have introduced her and uh, she became famous because of her book Gender Trouble. I have introduced that uh, she is a she is an American gender scholar. So this time I want to introduce you Judith Butler's theory of gender with reference to folklore. Butler says that we perform gender as we perform promise as we perform warning. These are actions which we do not perform physically, which we perform linguistically. Warning, threat, promise, thanking, greeting, these are uh, social actions which we perform through language. According to this scholar, gender is also such kind of social action that we perform through language. Okay. We perform these social actions including gender through language means through words and grammar which are provided by language. If we follow this theory, theory of Butler that we perform gender, it means we socialize children with gender through language of folklore. Butler says English has two sex based pronouns. You all know this from early classes that uh, first person pronouns, second person pronouns, they are used for both males and females. They are gender neutral, sex neutral. In fact, we should use the term, but we are very uh, loose in use of these terms. So, but exactly speaking, they are sex neutral. But third person, third person pronoun, except they, he, she, these two, they are not sex neutral. He represents males and she represents females and it represents uh, those things which do not have any sex and they can be used for both. Okay, so, ultimately two pronouns of English language, they would tell us something about gender in English language and through English language in English culture. Okay. So, Males cannot use, if we are speakers of English, so males can never use she or her for themselves. Okay. And women cannot use he or his for themselves. So they are bound by language to use these two gender based, sex based gender uh, pronouns. If we follow Butler, she wants to say that language, English language does not allow us to think beyond these two genders. There are males and females. There is no third category of gender. There is no category beyond heterosexuality beyond uh, you, you see male and female. All transgender categories, they are possible if we break grammatical gender that is provided by, if we violate grammatical gender that is provided by English language. And that is why she calls it gender trouble. That is created by language itself. Okay. Folk literature does the same as does gendered pronoun. It also restricts, it puts limitations about our concept of 
male and female. That's why they are part of socialization. And this socialization, socialization means the process of learning what is acceptable in a culture and what is not acceptable in a culture. This is called a process of socialization. And folklores, they help in this process to parents and teachers. Feminists think folk literature promotes patriarchy. You see, because this folk literature, if it is in English, it would use only two genders, he and she. He for males and she for females. So there is possibility of heterosexual relations. No third sex category is possible in these folklores, which are written in English. And uh, according to Butler, this is language of folklores which puts limitations on the thinking of the young mind. It uh, conveys the ideology of sexuality, a heterosexuality, as if it were something natural, something normal, something that is real. I give you a task to understand this point of view. Watch or read at least two fairy tales from the online source given in the beginning of this module. Do you agree with Butler after watching or reading at least two fairy tales? Then give your own opinion and reject or accept Butler's theory of gender. And when you write your answer, quote direct dialogue from these fairy tales or line, sentences from these fairy tales. So we conclude that. Butler's thing, there is one to one link between language and gender stereotypes. But this view is against the current perception that it is not language that is directly linked with gender. It is the author that can use language to present gender, to present men and women in a particular specific perspective. This is the thinking that prevails these days and we call it post-feminine.